I would just like to span about five minutes just offering some general comments, mainly in the line of clarifying my own confusions um, from Stiegler's uh, presentation here, and around a few of the, what are for me, most important claims that will be worth contending with, clarifying, and discussing. Uh, so, in a broad sense, it seems to me that the key arguments that Stiegler tries to raise here against Simon Dom are first, that while the latter makes it possible through his philosophy of technics to think, to think hyper-materialistically, that Simon Dom nonetheless fails to do so himself. And second, that his commitment to a notion of information which is in some sense still too tied to cybernetics or more precisely to quantitative and computational notions of information itself constitutes a failure to think what Stiegler calls the improbable, and further the inescapable pharmacological dimension of our relationship to techniques. To think these two criticisms together, I will just briefly state what it appears to me what is being developed by this notion of hyper-materialism, which I'm still a little confused about. The first, uh, it seems, is that hyper-materialism is hyper-materialist for Stiegler, insofar as following Schrodinger's What is Life, and through various insights from quantum mechanics more broadly, that we must think radically beyond form and matter, as Simon Dom already has done, but also, too, that we also must think beyond a life and non-life division, demarcated through the division of the organic and inorganic, and think this, and through this, thereby, think the, think the question of technical life. This is, all, this is so, at least what, from what I can draw from Stiegler's reading, uh, from the entire question of what precisely technics constitutes, namely the extension of life by means other than life, i.e. organized inorganic matter. Technics as organized inorganic matter are the exosomatized organs constitutive of human groupings and milieus and form the medium and thus the site of potentiality of all forms of noetic life or noetic singularities. Stiegler here suggests magical, religious, and economic in a list of what forms of potentiality which may become actualized, but it might also be important to add to this list the question of war, techniques and war. Uh, technical organs themselves, potentialities, are properly speaking life precisely insofar as human life, if we wish to be differentiated from non-human life, is precisely constituted through, a, through actualizing the potentialities of inorganic, organized inorganic matter, subject not to an endosomatic law of natural selection, but rather to an exosomatic, or rather to exosomatic processes of artificial selection, whose criteria are determined today by cyberneticized, informationalized, probabilistic, and quantitative hyperindustrial capitalism. The pharmacological question is always, in other words, the question of what our conditions or criteria of artificial selection ought to be, and therefore what should be inscribed in our future processes of retention and protention, which is therefore inescapably a question of political economy. Hypermaterialism is thus a materialism confronting such a politics and which centralizes the vitality of the process or movement between noetic organic matter, human, and organized inorganic matter techniques as the very support of the Weeses. So perhaps Stiegler's claim here is that Simon Don's potential effacement of the question of technical life and pharmacology becomes an effacement of the question of the protensional and retentional criteria of any future political economy, or relatedly the question of the development of exosomatic systems that support noetic singularities or noetic différence and their relations. All of which is to say the development of systems that locally defer entropy. Now, of course, we might not necessarily agree with such a characterization of Simon Dome. As we discussed yesterday, and I open these to some suggestive questions, is, and I open these as some suggestive questions, is there not already potentially a politics that we discussed yesterday flowing from Simon Dome's work? one which centrally asserts a type of alienation between the human and the technical, which must be foundational to any politics and pedagogy to come. 
Indeed, is this not the precise function of the pedagogical figure of the mechanologist that is discussed at various points in Dumont? Or does Simon Don not also begin to lay the groundwork for noetic lays of life in his notion, his own notion of technical life, through which the human and the technical exist at the same level in a type of egalitarian relation between the human and the technical? I wonder what you all think, whether or not you find a potential danger of an informational reductionism in Simon Don that Stiegler seems to position and put towards him. Or does not the very idea of a necessary tension, and we discussed tension a lot yesterday in technical development, already sound like some sort of pharmacological notion, the idea that there's always tensions to be resolved. Um, yeah, so those are just the very broad comments and questions that I would like to begin with. And uh, now I will just, uh, and I offer these as not fully explicated thoughts, but just as initial reactions. And uh, yeah, I just want to pass it over to Ian, who's gonna take it up and and I really just, I really just want to kind of well, a thank you, Connor, for kind of just kind of helping kind of gather together. I think and burn to talk there in a really useful sort of way, and indeed bringing some of the conversations from yesterday kind of into that. I mean, it strikes me we've got a very neighbourly dispute here, of course, between Stiegler and Simodon. And when it comes to neighbourly disputes, it's often the detail that matters. So, and I think that's what Connor was kind of picking up on there around just exactly how we understand information, hypermateriality, and so on. Um, but that um, neighbourly dispute, even if it rests on detail, might still nonetheless have some fairly broad ramifications uh, in terms of what we talked about yesterday vis-a-vis -vis overcoming alienation. And in particular, I think perhaps what the, uh, the, the kind of uh, the nature of philosophical thought has to be such that it will have a pedagogy that will enable us to instantiate the kind of difference uh, required to, uh, to, to, to overcome this alienation. Um, picking up on one of the, the uh, discussions from yesterday, um, I suppose part of what interests me here is that Stiegler is effectively kind of suggesting that Simon Don has made the possibility of an engine of difference uh, in his thought, but hasn't become a difference engineer. And in some sense, I wonder if that's another way of thinking about what's at stake between the two of them in their neighborly and I think possibly quite friendly sort of way, but still nonetheless quite important. So, <clears throat> you know, that's just a, just a headline thought for me. Anybody would like to uh, chip in? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, just behind you, you first, and then. It's um, really, really. I don't know, I have this one. Huh. And then, I, I, I still, it's still, uh, I mean, whatever is in there, I'm not asking you correctly, but why he is trying to like bring up like the Fabian, like primary retention, secondary retention, tertiary retention? What, what? Okay, so that's a, you, you just kind of feel like, I mean, that obviously speaks to his over uh, kind of. Yeah, my understanding is like uh, it has to do with like maybe our memories, not just from our empirical experiences. Maybe like a, we can get kind of memories from the what we see, like from technology or even like a tool. So I'm wondering like if this kind of thing, how it can touch up on the most uh, sensitive issue in the world now, like blurring boundaries of human being and technology. Now a lot of like the uh, efforts and the trials is made. And then after me uh Dr. Yoki will say something. Actually I ha have a question too because like a uh like Stigler mentioned it his work. Yeah. And what I want to ask you, uh, Dr. Yoki is like what makes different isolation? What triggers Different depart depression. 
but whether it is human being or technology, what stimulates that kind of difference? Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. Yuk, yeah. <laughs> I just want to give a bit of information of uh, because it was a conversation that was started, uh, um, I think it was in 2013 or 2014. But at the time, I was just curating the article that I have written called uh, Simon Go, and I just want to have a It uh, was published in 2015, and uh, so then we had a, cover, we had a workshop uh, on the article that I had written um, in Germany with uh, Danach, and. Uh, I mean, basically, what you were trying to, to show, and what he has um, read from what I have analyzed from the, from the, the, the notion of information in Simon Dos, <coughs> he thinks that Simon Dos' critique of cybernetics is, um, seems to him a return to a philosophy of nature, mm -hmm. but not really dealing with the question of technology. Mm -hmm. So, um, which is very clear when. Uh, when Simon Bond says that we should go beyond the um, discrimination between information and probability in general and um, Linda, that you wanted to understand information as a, a signification. And so you want to generalize, and this is always an approach, a method of Simon Bond to generalize a certain notion in order to make it applicable to uh, a wider perspective. So Simon Long wanted to understand information not from the perspective of probability, but by doing so, he also kind of eliminated the technological dimension of information itself. So this is a problem for, for, for Stigler, and that is what he uh, tried to show that, uh, in fact, uh, we must engage with the question of the notion of information that is developed in biology, for example, because in biology there is appropriation of the notion of information, for example, in Schrodinger, in what is life, that Schrodinger has developed what he called a, a negative entropy as the necessity of uh, a living being to sustain his life. Right? Because uh, if, a be, if we are always in constant um, becoming entropic, if we are becoming entropic uh, constantly, there must be a mechanism that bring in a negative entropy that not the life. And here is uh, the, the notion of, uh, of negative entropy uh, that was further uh, developed by uh, Leon uh, Bouillon, for the, uh, he, he, he patented into what is known as a negative entropy. So, uh, the Danas, uh, what he wants to do is that we should not ignore, we should not ignore this uh, appropriation in uh, of the laws of information in biology, which has uh, some, um, which is more technical with than uh, Simon Simon Bonwell to uh, has hinted on. So now he wanted to, well, if I uh, understand correctly, um, what he really wanted to do, he, he wanted to kind of uh, continuous a synthesis between uh, the cybernetic notion of information and Simon Dodd's critique of cybernetic and see how, could, uh, how this could be understood or could be beneficial to articulate the notion of uh, individuation, a psychic and collective individuation. That is to say, to see how information uh, both in the technical and non-technical sense of being um, really appropriated in what he called uh, exosomatization and how the exosomatization plays a role in the individuation. Mm. So that's the that's the background. Mm. Thanks. Thanks. Just on base what what you said, I mean, you, you mentioned a minute ago that sort of when it comes to these finer differences between people like Dean Simon and Stigler, it's all in, in the detail. And I wonder if it's, there's also a, a sort of important contextual dimension. I and mean, clearly what we're talking about here is a very complex history of the, the sort of the, the migration of the Shannon Weaver information model into biology, into fundamental physics, into all sorts of other scientific contexts. Um, and at the, for me, the, what, what struck me is that the, the heart of um, Stiegler's talk there, and I have to say I'm not a great reader of Simondon, so I have to talk more about the context rather than the detail of Simondon. 
um, is this distinction between um, a, a quantitative probabilistic, probabilistic a notion of information and a qualitative notion of information. And when I read Stieper's recent work and his discourse on negentropy um, and the neganthropocene and, 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 and all these sort of various terms he's adduced, there seems to be a progression from you know, a, an original philosophical interpretation of thermodynamics where it's very much a probabilistic um, quantitative idea of information that's at stake to a value schema of, of entropic becoming and negatropic becoming, which is qualitative. Um, and so clearly he's going back to Simon Dahl and saying, I think, as you suggested, Connor, that, that Simon Dahl is too reliant on this quantitative uh, idea of information and the probabilistic idea of information and hasn't progressed as far to adopting it into an evaluative schema. Now, going back to the context of, of, of Simon Dahl, particularly the hinterland in, in Kangiyem, it strikes me that in early Kangiyem, who, who is aware of the Schrodinger essay, um, who develops a, a, a value-centered notion of life, a qualitative notion of life, no, um, understood as sens, sense. In his early essays, Kangiyem says that the being of the organism is its sense. And sense, in Kangiyem, in this early stage, is always understood as um, a, a value in relation to a need. And so it goes back to this idea of life of the Schrodinger, um, uh, gives us and then goes back all the way to 19th century vitalism um, that, that life has a qualitative dimension that is irreducible to its, its quantitative measurement. And I, I think this is a context that Simondon would have been aware of because he's very much sort of in the hinterland with, with Kangiem. And as Kangiem uh, himself um, absorbs information theory uh, across his career in the 50s and 60s, um, you get a, an adoption of information theory into his understanding of life, which is aligned with the code of DNA. So it's quantitative, but it still carries over this qualitative dimension of, of, of sense as a, as a kind of a value. So I'm wondering whether, it, given that, that that is already at stake in the hinterland of, of, of Simon Dong's work, whether, and again, this is where my ignorance of Simon Dong comes in, whether that dimension of value isn't in some way already embedded in his thinking of individuation, of individuation as a, as a value and as a, as a qualitative necessity of, of life. So that's really responding also to what you said, is to this question of whether you, you can see exactly the, the rightness of what Stiegler is saying, but actually it, there may be scope there for that already being, let's say, given this sort of Kangiyemi's background of Simon's work. Hey, did you want to jump in there? At the yeah, um, because it kind of responds both to uh, what Ian has just said and what you just said. Um, because, and, and a couple of you may be aware of this perspective from my point of view already, but I think what happens in this particular paper continues some troubling themes in Stephen's work on these concepts, particularly the entry which actually perpetuate some of what he's trying to move away from in this vitalist legacy in Kangyem um, in some ways. Because on the one hand, he critiques a kind of computational uh, reductionism. I think that's a very fair comment. But while also not kind of really critically thinking about the, the opposite of that, which is the vitalist kind of slant that he gives to Negentropy, and actually, Negentropy has been criticised for a kind of vitalism ontological concept of presuppositions uh, by people like Isabel Skagia, um, which is not really dealt with. I think this is troubling for a couple of reasons. First, just because it pushes oneself away from what's problematic in Simulon, what we've just seen just as problematic from the perspective of some of the other presuppositions in the philosophy of technology, which is this kind of resistance towards ontology. But then in terms of values, and particularly the use in this paper of uh, state of the, the term law, the state of law in that law as physical law and law as value, I think become conflated. Um, there's a moment I'm going to point to it now where they, they use all these things to change it. So if negentropy is a negative, oh, sorry, if negentropy is a principle or law, okay, even forgetting that like the problematic vitalistic assumptions. Why does that mean it has to be a normative 
I, I don't see that connection. I think that connection um, is taken for granted uh, and perhaps has some troubling kind of, uh, political kind of associations, but I won't follow through with now, but maybe a kind of conservation of order. If once we translate conservation of order as a physical principle into a normative principle, I think we reach an impasse with uh, politics, particularly politics with emancipation, if that's what's trying to be thought, even though I think there is some resistance to that. Um, so just a couple of thoughts on yeah. the back of those. Thanks, Ben. That really, actually really neatly picks up uh, on the on different aspects of the conversation. And it's quite nice to be able to kind of look to the other edge of Stiegler and say, well, maybe there's a problem there, given what he's been saying about Simone also. I think that's a very interesting idea. There might be a, a challenge at the level of vital as well as his own challenge to Simone Dahl at the level of certain reductionism. So that's a kind of intriguing uh, other edge, I think, maybe to bring into the conversation. Um, any thoughts, Sam? Yeah, <coughs> so my, my issue is, if I understand it, Stiegler's assertion that Simone Dahl doesn't get past this quantified notion of information. Uh, no, but I, I, Simon Dolan basically says that information is not a quantitative, it's a qualitative. Yeah. qualitative. She yeah. wanted to get into, she wanted to understand information from the perspective of quality yeah. and quantity. Okay. So that is uh, uh, moving, he wants to move away from the cybernetic uh, or, or the cybernetic. Uh, uh, information theory yeah. to, to, to understand uh, information qualitative uh, in terms of quality. So that is why there is the question of signification. Uh, you want to generalize it as a, as a, as a signification. But uh, the, if we go into that, I mean, this is not actually not very. Um, Simonon's critique is not very uh, not justified. Because if you look further in the history of cybernetics, so for in, in particular the fifth uh, Messi conference, in the fifth con uh, Messi conference there was a dialogue between uh, Novavi and no, sorry, no, the, uh, Shannon and uh, Donald McKay. Uh, Donald McKay is a cyberthesian, but uh, it's an uh, English uh, mathematician, and he, 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 he talks in Cambridge. He basically proposed uh, information theory of meaning. And he was in a kind of um, a debate with a channel on this point. Um, and so it is not completely justified to set aside the net ignores uh, uh, the, the, the quality of information. Uh, but we're just to, to respond to the first uh, thing that we have said, that we Simon want to move away from the uh, uh, hmm. quantity of the yeah. Can I just add a question here? Yeah. Where I'm finished? Yeah, I. I yeah. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, Simon criticized the quantitative uh, definition of information he sees in uh, cybernetics, right? But then the real issue for me is not the opposition between quantitative and qualitative. It's more the fact that the quantitative for Vina and Shannon is taken as a quantity, as, as a given quantity of information, so that the, the important point is not the distinction between quantity and quality here. It is the distinction between individuated quantity or quantity in individuation. I wonder how you would respond to this. Individuated, uh, individuated quantity yeah. uh, or quantity in individuation. Because I think it is a bit um, uh, 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 it's a bit misleading. misleading. Yeah, it's a bit misleading if you organize it between the. the you know, the split between quantity and quality, because you, 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 you may believe that you are moving from the domain of, uh, let's say, precise knowledge to the domain of uh, qualitative uh, uh, 
uh, incapacity, right, to real, to understand the reality. Uh, well, I believe that the critic, and so I'm not really on, on the same level as they now on, on this point, I believe that the critic that Simondon is trying to do is to, uh, on the level of, of machine, right, to, to understand the signals, I mean, in a, in a real materialistic uh, conception, as something that is disparational, dispar right? And so, but I mean, in the in the language machine itself, right? Not something that would be otherwise. And so therefore, I wonder what, what you could respond to this. Yeah, I mean, this is very interesting, but because mm -hmm. of what is a, what is prompted to uh, I just want to kind of add another question to mm -hmm. what Tom just said, because that's very interesting. And I wonder whether there's also another level at which this becomes even more complicated, because if you compare Wiener with the Shannon Weaver theory, the, the idea of inform information in Shannon Weaver is defined as a measure of entropy, whereas in Wiener it's the exact opposite. And where Shannon and Weaver define information as a measure of entropy, they explicitly bracket semantic content or meaning from their theory. Whereas it's very clear that in Wiener there's a kind of neo finalist, uh, if you like, phenomenology of. The organization which is at work. So the difference between thinking about information as either entropic as, as a measure of entropy or as a measure of negentropy also I think entails a shift in view, if you like, from a kind of I don't know, a kind of quantitative physicalist understanding of information to a, a sort of form of theological judgment on physical organization. And that's very decisive for trying to locate where Simon Don is. Um, there is um, a difference, of course, between Vienna and uh, Shannon's uh, uh, sign of information, because one is uh, the national, Shannon is the measurement of surprise, the Vienna is the measurement of um, organization. The, the difference is that um, Wiener was very much influenced by physiology. He was uh, very, very much, much influenced by Hallam, a, a, a British uh, a physiologist. Um, but this is probably not very uh, important at this point to say if you want to talk about the question of quality and quantity. So let me go, go back to the question of quantity. Uh, now, how can we address the question of quantity? Uh, there is a possibility to see it as just a numeric, just an indication of measurement of something. There is also a possibility to see it as intensity, in the sense of the words. Now, I had, I had an article called, uh, on, to articulate, which articulates the, the notion of intensity in Simon Don and as well as in the words. Now, I think that with the question of intensity, and I, 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 I very I like very much what you said, integrated quantity and quantity in integration. That's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. in Simon Don there is also this, uh, I think that there is also this question of intensity. If there is no intensity, then A is no, uh, there's no, it is not possible to articulate when or at which point integration will take place. Because individuation, you always information will trigger the individuation only when a threshold is surpassed. Yeah. So um, <coughs> there is also a relation between int this intensity and the signific and signification. Now, when Simon won't talk about signal and and the receiver, the sender and the receiver. Now, when will the uh, when will signification take place? It is only when the incoming signal has a relation with the schema which is already predefined in the receiver. Therefore, there is a meaning, there is a signification that is produced. If the signal is irrelevant to the schema already defined, there is no meaning, it's just a random, it's just noise. No? So in this case, there is a localization, there is a lo locality in, in, uh, only in this locality the <coughs> meaning is produced. And uh, also on, only in this setting that a certain intensity 
uh, is uh, possible and then could uh, trigger the process of individuation. Um, thank you. Um, so rather than intensity, would you take it as quantitative or as qualitative? It is beyond this distinction, right? It is beyond the distinction, but intensity, if I say this, that it always is contextualized. It has a kind of um, uh, locality. So um, that's why I said that. Pictures. Yeah. So that's why I said that there are two ways to articulate the question of uh, quantity. This point is just my question about the singular circuitry detention. Uh, so, like uh, regarding entropy, the entropy, whose maybe entropy, that has to do with like uh, this is a sensitive uh, entity sensitive. Can I compare that way? What I mean is like uh, entropy. What I understand is like the state of like the uh, chaos, or and then the entropy the opposite way, kind of like to try to find out the state of order things like that. So, kind of like a receiver, or I try to. Make a balance in between. That try to be like a mutually to carry or not that to start try to make a balance in 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 concept whatever. Is it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, yes. Yeah, please. Also, yeah. in response to Yan's that. Um, Towards the end of the introduction of two mode, uh, two mode don't say something which is. Uh, it's a bit uh, astonishing, uh, and uh, that then now I think he didn't do not do a gem. And Anne has mentioned several times to uh, to Bernard when Simon says that we should use machines to fight against the becoming entropic of the universe. That's what Simon says. We must use machines to fight against the uh, entropic becoming of the universe. Of course, it, is, it, is a, it, it already implies a neg entropic uh, sense of, of, of technology. No? So I think if we look at what Simon Donald wanted to do, he actually is compatible with what Bernard wanted to do. Like, how can we use technology to uh, for the purpose of the uh, pres uh, preservation of life? And that is also what Kungilem, when he said, uh, that we should use the machines to, um, uh, we should use machine, machines to preserve life. That, that, that technology has the, that which is called general order technology, uh, and that's what I also why he named the vessel as the first general order technology. Um, so this is a. Um, 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 so there is uh, the Simon Long is not against Kondilen, but actually he is working in the same line as Kondilen as organologist, would you can say. Uh, even though Simon Long didn't say that he used two words organologist, but there is a lineage from uh, Jacques Lafitte, uh, mm -hmm. from Jacques Lafitte to uh, Kondilen to uh, Simon Long, and if that is Kondilen, there is a, 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 a trajectory. Uh, genealogy or uh, <coughs> genealogy. I think that that fits with the sense that I was sort of driving towards being less familiar with Simon Don, that um, there would already have been a continuation of that movement in Congo within Simon Don, which is not at all compatible with what Stiegler himself is doing. And my sense of the essence of Stiegler's argument is that that as I understand it, is that Simon Don takes us very, very far and is doing you know, everything in the right direction, but it doesn't quite go far enough um, because of the, the not following through on pharmacology and, and organology, etc. And of course, um, Kangian does use the term organology in his early essays. Just as a footnote on the issue of qualitative and quantitative, um, my, my sense is that from a, a certain, if you like, um, metaphysics of intensity and process, and I'm thinking of Deleuze, it's very easy and all too easy to ally the distinction between the qualitative and the quantitative. Um, it's just, it's ready-made, because it, it, that's what it does. It puts you in that, that level of uh, an overarching metaphysics. I think from the phenomenological perspective and from the perspective of, of, of science and certain organizational knowledge, 
there is a limit point between quality and quantity. If you approach largely um, life from a biological perspective, you're doing so quantitatively. If you approach life from the perspective of phenomenological experience, you're doing so qualitatively. And this is the interesting thing about Kangian, is that as a thinker of biology, he allows for um, a conjugation of uh, a, qu a quantitative approach to biology, but also a qualitative. When he comes to think of the being of the organism as its sense, and this thinking of, of biological relationality as sense, you have a scope there, particularly how this develops across Ken Guillaume's career in his um, assimilation of information, information theory, of, of not simply aligning the qualitative and the quantitative through a sort of a metaphysics of intensity of process, but actually thinking them together in a kind of a continuity, which is not, doesn't require that leap up to that sort of moment of the metaphysics. Fascinating stuff. Um, I think just so that we try and keep a little bit to schedule, uh, we should probably kind of call it quits there. But um, thank you all very much for uh, immediately again kind of engaging in such fascinating conversation.